Very good. Good afternoon, Founders Families. Um, I'm excited to be here again today uh, addressing the four possible models that uh, we have been planning uh, since the beginning of the COVID crisis. Now, um, there's a lot to cover today, so I'm going to try to be very brief with my news. We do have some exciting news that I'd like to share with you. And then we're going to jump into the weeds of the four possible learning models that we are considering for this coming year. So let's do some uh, news first, some good news first. Uh, our teachers are going to be, our brand new teachers are going to be here this Monday. So we're very excited to host them. They'll start training on Monday. They'll be here about two weeks of training uh, over the summer. And then again in August, we do a second two-week training with all of our teachers, not just our brand new teachers. So our new teachers are going to be here on Monday. Now, uh, related to our new teachers, we're also going to be uh, showcasing them or showing them off. We're very excited about them. We think that they're going to be uh, excellent additions to our team. We will be uh, showing them off on Facebook. Uh, so you'll be able to see our teachers in a sh with a short biography and some pictures of uh, who they are and what they love to do most on their spare time, in their spare time. Uh, you'll be able to see that within two weeks. Ms. Morales is working on putting that together for you so that we can introduce our teachers um, three, four weeks before school starts. Um, the next uh, piece of news that I have is that we have been working on getting our AP courses approved. And it's looking like we are um, getting ready to have AP classes starting in the fall. So just a few uh, words about that. We plan to have AP courses offered in biology for ninth grade, chemistry in 10th grade, and a statistics uh, course, which would be a math credit. So those are the three AP courses that we're looking at right now. Oh, excuse me, and Physics 1. I almost forgot one. So that's a total of four. Physics 1 for our 11th graders. So that's exciting. We're also working on uh, already, I know, it's, I know it's only 11th grade, but we're already anticipating and preparing for our first graduating class. And uh, we have a team looking into uh, renting a beautiful place here in San Antonio. We've been looking at sites and what would be the, the perfect location for our graduation ceremony two years from, uh, from now. So we're already preparing for that. Um, additional things are we're also uh, working with uh, some universities to uh, uh, build relationships with them because we want to have summer internships. So we want to give our high schoolers the opportunity to be able to travel over the summer, do a quick internship with a university, either in math or science or law or literature, uh, which will uh, make their resumes look even better. So we're uh, hoping to have a set staple uh, internships that we do as a school. So those are just a couple of things that I wanted to excite you about, uh, things to look forward to this coming year. So now let's jump into the weeds. Are we ready? This is going to be a lot of information, so I'm going to try to go as slowly as possible. Um, any questions that we are not able to address for you, we're going to make sure to write those down and get back to you either via email or our next Facebook session. Um, I want to remind our parents that all of the information that you hear today is liable to change. So this is very important. Uh, information is very fluid right now. We, we hear from the governor. Um, we hear from him often, so uh, things change depending on what the situation is uh, with the rise of um, the, the virus. So I want to make sure that our parents understand that what you're hearing today is not something that is set in stone. It's what we know at this moment and what uh, are the possible four plans that we're looking at with the information that we have at this moment. Um, the reason we're doing this is we want our families to have up-to-date information so that you can make the right decision for your family and for your children. Um, so we are here to support you in making that decision, and that's why we're having this Facebook Live today. The other thing that I believe is very important that I communicate is that we have a survey that's going to be sent out this afternoon, uh, just a few minutes after this Facebook Live you know, 30 minutes to an hour at most, a survey is going to go out with the information that I'm sharing with you today. So uh, you don't have to have a pen 
uh, and paper to jot this all down, you will receive an email from the school with the four different models and a survey asking you to select one. Now, why is this important? Um, as uh, we've learned together as a community, and I believe that uh, we did a very good job about uh, showing how flexible we are when, uh, when hearing your thoughts uh, and uh, being considerate of what is best for you. Um, when you share with us and give us feedback, we are able to make the best decisions. So uh, it is very important that all of our families, as, as much as possible, fill out this survey for us and select this, the model that best and this is important, that best meets your needs. Every family is going to be different. Uh, every family is going to feel different about uh, the, the models. So choose the one that best fits your needs. With that information, we're going to then meet as a team here on campus and also with our uh, corporate representatives, our superintendent and our regional director, and we're going to make the choice that best meets the needs of most of our families. So uh, I just want to reiterate how important this is. Please take a moment to fill out that survey. Uh, the survey will be open between now and uh, Monday of the following week, and then we'll have to close it in order to gather the information that you have provided us with. So let's jump in. There are four possible models that we have been working with regarding learning for the new academic year of 2020-21. So I'll begin with model number one. Model number one is called the A-B rotating schedule. I'll say that one more time. Model number one is the A-B rotating schedule. And what does this mean? This means that group A, if your student falls in group A, your student will attend school on Mondays and Thursdays. If your student is in group B, your student will attend school on Tuesdays and Fridays. That means that Wednesday is an online conference day, and that means that off days, so for example, if you're group A and you are at school on Mondays and Thursdays, then on Tuesdays and Fridays, you would be working at home on an assignment that is um, intended to be completed on your own. Uh, the academic schedule for this model is the same as last year's, so from 7.15 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. for our students or our group of students who's going to be on campus. Uh, all social distancing, and this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, all social distancing and cleaning precautions per the CDC, uh, per CDC regulations, will apply to this model. So what are these regulations? Staggered exits, staggered lunches, minimized traffic in our hallways, six feet distancing in classrooms, face shields and masks, etc., etc. Everything that we have heard from the governor uh, just recently. So that's model one. Now, why have we considered model one? This is very important, uh, and, I, and I do need our parents to be aware of this. Uh, we have considered this model as an option because um, because of the regulations that uh, the CDC and the state of Texas has imposed on our schools. And I want you to think about it in this way. Uh, when we are required to keep our students at, at a six foot distance, six feet distance minimum, that means that we cannot fit all 20 or all 25 students in the same classroom. So we would have to spread our students out into other classrooms or across the campus to make sure that we're meeting these requirements. That means, as a result, we can't have all 700 of our students on campus at the same time. So that is the reason why we have looked at the AB rotating schedule. It is a model that a lot of schools are looking at right now. and. Um, we decided to take a look at it as well and see if it would be a model that fits the needs of our families. So uh, as someone I heard once say, no heat, no judgment, please, if this model fits your needs, go ahead and choose this model in your survey. You're not committing to it. It at least tells us what you would do today if school were to start tomorrow. Okay, model number two. Model number two, we call it the K-6 on campus, and the 712 completely online model. Okay, that's a mouthful. So let me try that one more time. Model number two is 
all K-6 students on campus Monday through Friday and all 7th through 12th grade students online only Monday through Friday. So what does this mean? This means that our 7th through 12th grade students will remain at home to allow our kinder through 6th grade students to come to school, spread out, and use all three buildings on campus for social distancing. Okay? The same social distancing and cleaning regulations per CDC apply to our kinder through 6th grade students who will be here on campus. And as I mentioned earlier, that is, to give you an example, staggered exits and lunches, minimized traffic in the hallways, six feet distancing, face shields, masks, etc. Now the on-campus academic schedule is, uh, will remain the same from 7.15 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. for dismissal. Uh, 7th through 12th grade students, and this is an important detail, our 7th through 12th grade students will receive live lessons from their founders' teachers. So it's not a you're-on-your-own type model. It's a model where our students will actually have live lessons, uh, 7th through 12th grade. Our 7th through 12th grade students will follow a college model schedule. And what this means is they will meet online as a classroom on specific days and times for specific subjects. Uh, so, for example, uh, math would happen three times a week at the same time with a full classroom of ninth graders or 10th graders and with a teacher who will teach the math lesson live, whereas um, an elective such as rhetoric, which I'm hoping to teach next year, will happen only twice a week, Tuesdays and uh, Thursdays, at a given time with a specific group of students who selected uh, rhetoric as their elective. 7th to 12th grade students will manage between um, 4 to 5 hours of daily online coursework starting at 8 a.m. And 7th to 12th grade students would receive daily support from online teachers under this model. I do think it's important to uh, reiterate that we will be offering extracurriculars and athletics under this model uh, as much as we possibly can. We know that it will be a hardship for some of our families to travel from home or from work to bring their students here. But if we have any high schoolers who are of a driving age, they, uh, we would like to invite and encourage them to go ahead and drive up to campus after school to join their athletics teams. So that's our second model. Once again, why did we consider this model? It's the same reason as the first one. Uh, because of the regulations involving the six feet distancing, uh, we uh, cannot have all of our students on campus at once. Under this model, we are able to keep all of our kindergartners through sixth graders on campus, spread them across all three buildings, but we are not able to host our seventh through twelfth grade students. So that's model number two. If this is a model that fits your needs, please go ahead and on your survey, select this model as the model for your student. Okay, moving on to model number three. This model, we call it the hybrid on-campus and remote learning model. So this is very important. Once again, model number three is a hybrid model, which is a mix of on-campus learning and remote learning. What does that mean? It means that all K-12 students would be allowed to be on campus only as long, and this is important, 40% of our students commit to a year-long remote learning. So if you are part of the group, ladies and gentlemen, that does not feel safe returning, and if that group is large enough to allow for a 40% um, 40% absence of students on campus, then we would be able to have the rest of our students here on campus, kinder through 11th grade. Okay? So, once again, this model is only possible if 40% of our students commit to year-long remote learning. What does it look like? What else does this mean? Online students will receive a hybrid of five of, of live lessons, excuse me, and work on your own assignment. So you'll have a mix of the two. You'll get live lessons, and you'll also have assignments that are designated for individual work where you work on your own. So think of homework, very similar to doing homework after school. 
Uh, the on-campus academic schedule for this model uh, is the same as the previous two, from 7.15 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. for our students who do decide to return to the campus. The, uh, uh, the online academic schedule, and this is important, is only from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. So it is a reduced schedule. Um, so what do we mean by that? Does it mean that the students are going to be getting a less or a more reduced version of what we're doing on campus? Uh, in a way it does and in a way it doesn't, and this is important. Uh, we plan to emphasize and focus on reading comprehension and math and our core classes, history and science. Those four classes are in themselves can take up to an hour each, so that's four hours a day of coursework. Where we would see a dim, um, where we would see a diminishing of class time, it would be in what we call our specials courses, such as PE, such as art and music. So that's where we would see um, less time offered online in order to allow for our core classes to continue um, moving along at the regular pace and at the, at the rigor, at the standard that we believe at Founders is the best rigor for our students in order to prepare them for the future. Um, the online academic schedule, I've already mentioned this, then is from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Depending on grade level, students will manage a workload of between three to five hours daily and all social distancing and cleaning regulations, once again, per the CDC, apply to students that will be on campus. So that's our third model. It's the hybrid model. And this is a very popular model. I've heard a lot of parents request this model. They want to be able to, uh, to keep their student home and not lose their seat. Or they want to be able to uh, keep their student caught up on classes if, say, for example, that child uh, gets sick and has to stay home. So that's model number three. Model number four. Last but not least, and these were not organized in any order whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these are just all randomly put together. We don't have a preference. We want to hear from you so that we know what our families prefer. Model number four is what we call the online kinder through 12th grade at home only. So this would be the model where we decide as a school, no one's returning in the fall, and everyone's staying at home. Now, I know some of you will think that is not the best model, but I do want our families, again, no judgment, no heat, uh, as I heard someone say before, um, I want our families to feel com just comfortable choosing what works best for them. We need to know what works best for you. So what does this mean? Model number four means that all of our students, kinder through 12, will receive a hybrid of live lessons and work on your own assignments. Students will receive additional tutoring support daily. So in addition to the live lessons, there's going to be an open tutoring window where students can just show up in order to get some uh, extra support. Depending on grade levels, <clears throat> excuse me, depending on the grade level, students will manage a workload of three to five hours daily. So our younger kiddos in the kindergarten you shouldn't expect more than three hours for them. Uh, we do want to minimize as much as we can screen time, but we also understand that if we really want to educate our children and have them and want them be prepared for the future, uh, for their next grade, we are going to have to add a little extra time uh, of work from home. And the online academic schedule is from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. Once again, if we want to allow for live sessions where our children are actually interacting with a teacher and classmates, we'll have to limit our time between 8 and 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. Those are my four models, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have spent and put in, invested a lot of hours to make sure that whichever one of these we choose, we are ready to take it on uh, without any hiccups. Um, and now it's time for questions. So I'm excited to hear from you. Uh, we're opening it up, opening it up for questions, and I can't wait to see uh, what you have in store. So what what is it looking like right now, uh, Ms. Morales? Um, so you, you've had some questions here. So oh, um, great. I some of our newer families are asked, are saying that they haven't received emails, but I did already communicate via chats that they we 
we're going to send it directly to them because they won't have access to Jupiter Ed. Mm-hmm. And then Friday, they should also be receiving our newsletter. Um, if not, they're going to call the front office. Yes. Um, so your first official question is... So can I just mention yes, that real fast to absolutely. our brand new families that are just watching uh, who are uh, planning on starting the school year with us. Welcome. This is very exciting uh, uh, to have new families join us. Um, we can't wait to show you the warmth uh, that, we, um, that we have as a community. Please, yes, call the front office if you're not receiving any of our emails. And we're also asking you to fill out the survey as well. So this is for all of our families, kinder through 11th grade. So first question, I'm ready. Um, so in the end, will there only be one model available? Um, in the end, great question. Um, it could pot- potentially be that, yes, there will only be one model available. Um, knowing that information, um, we, what we're seeing, at least from other campuses and other districts uh, here in the nation of Texas, families are gravitating towards the hybrid model because it's the one that allows for two possibilities. So um, it will all depend, this is important, it really all depends on the information that we receive back from you. Every community is different. Every community has different needs. And we want to hear from you for that reason because we want to make sure that we're making the right choice for our families. I will make sure after the survey to communicate back with you what the results of the survey were. And um, according to the requirements of the TEA, we're going to have to choose a model at least a week before school starts. And the reason that they've done that is because they want to make sure that our families um, have the most up-to-date information of uh, the rise or fall of um, infections um, and so that you can make the most informed decision about what you would like to do for your student this coming fall. So, yes, good question. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Ms. Flatman is asking, do all siblings stay in the same group? Uh, yes, so if we did an A, B, we would have to uh, make sure that our siblings and our families are all together in order to minimize um, any um, conflicts or inconvenience to our families. So we're de- we have definitely taken that into consideration, yes. I, I should probably repeat your question. Can, can everyone hear Ms. Morales as she's reading out the questions? I'll, pro- I'll just read them out. I'll just repeat them again. We have 182 of you watching, uh, or at least 182 devices uh, viewing us live. Uh, We don't know how many more are actually behind those screens looking at us. Uh, So, uh, yes, ask me your questions, please, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I will. Ms. Kiefer's question. Yes. Um, Ms. Kiefer was asking, which I can't quote her verbatim right now because everything kind of moved up on me, (laughs) is... um, if we can select different models for, so she has two children, if she can select one model for one child and a different model for a her other child. Oh, great question, Mrs. Kiefer. Uh, thank you so much for that question. The question is, can I select different models for different children? Yes, you can. Uh, when you look at the survey, the survey will be per family, and then there's going to be an option to do every single child individually. So you'll be able to tell us, I'd prefer my fourth grader to do this, and I'd prefer my sixth grader uh, going into seventh grade to do this. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the survey has the capability of showing us Uh, If you're a family of 10, for example, uh, what your preference is for each individual child, if that's what you're thinking of uh, doing. So, yes. Next question. It kicks me out from the questions. Yes, here, you can choose this one. We're having some technical difficulties, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, Ms. Morales is going back online. It looks like the Facebook uh, exited, her, exited her out, <laughs> and she's coming. Are you able to see the comments from that computer? Okay, we're back on. We lost the first ones. I don't know if we lost them. It just, I guess, so many came in. Out so many are coming in at the same time. Looks like we're getting a deluge of questions ladies and gentlemen making it a little hard for us to be able to follow everyone's questions do we have some right on your cell phone ah great thank you miss hosteller has joined us and she is going to be oh we'll have to put it on mute to avoid the thank you 
Do we have one, Ms. Hustler? Maybe at the same time. Looks like we're getting. Lots of same questions. That's very good. It's very good. Lots, lots of questions regarding siblings. Okay, we have a new one. Will there be different teachers for online learning, or would one teacher have in-person students and online students? That's a great question, ladies and gentlemen. Who asked that question? Mrs. Villarreal. Ms. Villarreal, do we have... Uh, so, let me see if I understood the question. Do we have the same teacher for online as well as in the classroom? Or will there be different teachers? Uh, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is we are looking at the possibility of both options. So, with our district as a whole, we're looking at the entire uh, district of founders. Uh, we're partnering partnering with schools in Leander, schools in Louisville, Flower Mound, to share our teachers if we need to. Now, we will attempt to um, make sure that we are using or utilizing our teachers first. But if there is an instance where we might not be able to uh, meet the needs of a group of our families um, for whatever reason, then uh, we are looking at the possibility of having a set group of teachers across the district uh, designated for online teaching. So once again, that could change, but I do want you to, to know at least uh, what things and what conversations we've been having with our, super, with our superintendent about the possibility of sharing teachers for the online format. I remember one question was uh, Michelle. Here comes a question. Have, yes. Um, there was a possibility of on your AB schedule. AB schedule, okay. We could do Monday, Tuesday so that we can plan on Wednesday and then do a Thursday, Friday so that there's cleaning on Saturday, so that there's five days in between when the students are actually on campus. Who asked that question? Ms. Schultz. Ms. Schultz. Uh, so, Ms. Schultz, we, uh, the reason we selected the uh, Monday, was it again, M Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, in order to leave the Wednesday open was because uh, ultimately in the calendar, if we chose, if we, if we said chose a Monday, Wednesday, and a Thursday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, Thursday, or any other different model, that would mean uh, that one of our groups would end up with more uh, academic minutes than the other. So this is how we were able to solve that. However, uh, we, we are always looking at making sure that um, we have met all of the academic needs of our students, and if we need to change that, we will. So we'll be looking at that again. Do we have another one? I think her concern there was the cleaning. If you have uh, cleaning. students on A day, then a new set of students come in on B day. Mm -hmm. Instead of having the same set of students... Oh, that's very brilliant. Actually, that's Ms. Schultz. Mm -hmm. Ms. Schultz, I'm going to actually make a note of that. Um, so the, the suggestion is, can we have the A students come two days in a row? Back to back. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. So the answer is yes. Yes, we are able to do that, do that as well. And in fact, that is a very good reason uh, that she's giving us. So thank you so much. Okay. Yep. Ms. Flores asked, um, what do back. you mean by saving a seat? In a couple of the models you mentioned, saving a seat. Oh, Ms. Flores, uh, so a lot of our families, so the question is, what did you mean by saving a seat? Um, a lot of our parents um, have asked us what would happen if they withdrew uh, and for the year and then return the year after. When you withdraw, then you are giving up your seat for another family to fill it up. So that means that you would have to reapply again the year after in order to be able to return to Founders. That's, uh, you'd be running a risk. Any family, um, any student who, d who does this would be running a risk of not getting back into the school because we work um, on the model of a lottery. So every December we'll do a lottery and that randomly selects families to fill those seats in the classroom. So that's all I meant by saving a seat. With these models, uh, both online, remote, or on campus, we are ensuring that all of our families keep their seats and they're not losing any so that nobody feels like they need to withdraw uh, out of fear of what might happen next year. So that's what, um, hopefully that answers the question. Who was that from, Ms. Flores? Yes. Hopefully that answers your question, Ms. Flores. Uh, we are trying to accommodate our families in order to uh, discourage our families from uh, withdrawing so that they don't lose their seat. 
in other words, uh, for the next year. Okay? Okay. Of course, yeah. a couple of different questions about masks. Masks. Will Yay. Will be required to wear a mask all day? Okay. Will there be shields on the desks? Hmm. Um, and what will the, the guidelines be for masks? Colors? Um, Good question. Okay, so who asked this question? Several different ones. Several different families are asking about masks. <laughs> okay, masks. Um, great. Okay, masks. Um, so, just a few weeks ago, the regulation on masks was, <clears throat> excuse me, that it was not mandatory. It was going to be voluntary for our children to wear masks. As a result of the current spike, uh, the governor has changed that. And now he is require, requiring that every child from the age of 10-year-olds 10 10 year and above, are required to wear masks. So no kindergartner all the way up to fourth grade will need to wear a mask. Only our fifth graders and upwards will have to wear a mask. Now, the mask is required while they're inside of the building um, and in their classrooms. Once outside, and if they're able to maintain their six-foot distances, they will not be required to wear a mask on our campus. So hopefully that answers the question. Regarding colors, we if, if masks are required, and again, this is something that could change a week or two before school starts, ladies and gentlemen. So I do ask that our families are um, flexible and understand that, uh, again, information is fluid. The governor might go back on this decision and say, masks are no longer required. If that, um, if that doesn't happen, however, um, please know that uh, masks will have specific colors in order to meet the standards of our uniform. And Land's End does offer an option for... Land's End, if anyone doesn't know, is our uniform provider. They provide an option for masks. So we have already arranged with them to make sure that our masks are uh, the specific colors that we need them to be. And um, if that is a requirement, I'm still waiting on our district to just give us the go-ahead for this, then we would be sending out a communication next week uh, to all of our families to request that they purchase the right color masks for, um, for our students starting in fifth grade upwards. Okay? Thank you for that question, guys. That's a good question. Anybody else? I, I, um, I would love... I think Miss Buckholtz, which is one of our kindergarten teachers, is making me a mask. And uh, it's got this wonderful, the headmaster, right here on my, on my mask. So I'm looking forward to sporting my mask on campus uh, when the day comes. Okay, if we select Model 4, mm -hmm. or if that's chosen, will there be clubs or athletics offered? Model 4, which is the at-home only. So um, the clubs and extracurriculars um, will happen with the first three models. With Model 4, which is only online, there is a possibility that we could offer on-campus clubs. They would be limited and they would be, again, uh, under the same regulations um, of social distancing and masks and cleaning. Uh, however, the it's more likely for the clubs to actually happen under the first three models. We have considered and we have planned for the possibility of online clubs. It's not the same as in person, uh, but we are looking at uh, providing some kind of outlet uh, and activities online as small groups where students can have their clubs and meet once a week with a specific group of students that share the same uh, hobbies and likes uh, online. Uh, again, that can change, and uh, we're looking at all possibilities. We would love, as a school, to continue making these those available. I just met with uh, Coach Snyder this morning to talk about our um, athletics. Uh, communication about athletics is going out here by next week, I believe. Uh, so we're, we're going full steam ahead with athletics and extracurriculars at the moment. If things change, we'll make sure to let our parents know um, how things have changed and in what ways they can sign up their kids or their students for uh, extracurricular activities. Good. Okay, how will founders be able to support students who need um, student services, speech services, etc.? Great question. How will founders uh, continue supporting our students who need um, extra academic supports such as speech or 504 or SPED? Um, 
Our SPED team and our 504 team have created their own model that they're going to be attaching to the four models that we have here. Um, and it is very similar to what happened uh, during this um, three months uh, of the last quarter of the school. Uh, they're going to be available the full day from morning to afternoon to make sure that they meet all of the requirements of the state in supporting those children, our children, who need those extra supports. So those, those are going to be the minutes that we still need to meet as a school. We're not going to be reducing those. We're going to make sure that those are available and our families will be receiving a communication from our, um, our SPED lead, which is Ms. Powers, on the times and days in which those are going to occur. Now, uh, Ms. Powers and her team, depending on the model, will be uh, splitting them up in splitting that time up uh, for on campus and online if necessary, or all offline, if, on, online, excuse me, if necessary, depending on the models. But we will continue offering those to our students. So, yes. Okay, easy one. E easy one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that an easy one? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a, a very difficult one. Yes, please, ladies and gentlemen, please still buy school supplies. Um, school, um, we are uh, intending, once again, uh, our hope, as always, our prayer and our, our desire as educators is to return to school the traditional way. So I would encourage our parents to be prepared for whatever happens in the next three or four weeks, whatever communication uh, the governor of Texas um, shares with us. Um, so yes, have school supplies. If, you, if we don't end up utilizing all of our school supplies this coming year, uh, it'll be good to keep those for, next, for the year after next. Uh, so yes, please still uh, <laughs> purchase your, your school supplies. Okay. That's good. Does the current HVAC system have hospital-grade filters to minimize the spread of germs? Uh, my understanding is that both the, both TEA and our district offices um, are putting a lot of um, funding towards all of these changes that are going to happen on campus. I don't know the full details of all of the things and practices that we're going to be now employing starting in the fall, but I do know that they're coming um, and it's several million dollars that have been put towards uh, all types of protective and cleaning supplies, and including our HVAC system. As soon as I have more detail about that, could, could we um, record which family asked that question? We will make sure to uh, send out that information to all of you. So yes, that's good. Okay. What will happen if a student or teacher tests positive with COVID? Will the class be suspended? Is mm -hmm. there a plan for that scenario? Yes. Um, so the directives that we've received from um, the governor is that in a situation like this one, we would obviously ask the student to stay home, and then we would have to trace that student's, um, what do we call it, schedule throughout the day. So wherever the student has been, we would have to know who, who he or she came into contact with. And then uh, there are a number of different methods that we can um, use. Uh, one of them is we send an entire section to stay home for the next two or three weeks, or we just send the students that that child came into contact with. Um, it, it's really going to depend on the level of contact um, that occurred on campus. But do expect, ladies and gentlemen, and this is very important and the governor has been very explicit about this, do expect some interruptions over the course of the year whenever we do have a child that has um, that is positive for the COVID. So, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are there going to be cleaning crews regularly on campus and will the playground be in use? Also, similar is what will recess look like? Mm -hmm. uh, so cleaning crew, uh, crews, the question is, will we have cleaning crews regularly on campus? Yes, we will have our cleaning crew uh, come in more often and uh, more regularly uh, than they have in the past. Um, and they will be meeting uh, the, the requirements for cleanliness and hygiene on our campus for this coming year. Uh, 
same thing. We'll be training our teachers to make sure that we're, uh, we're um, doing regular cleanups of the classroom and how to do that and what materials to use, how often do we take our children to the restroom to wash their hands. All of that is going to be part of now the, the regular rhythm of our school. So you can expect that to happen here as well. Uh, recess, uh, again, so far... Um, the directives that we've received is that there are certain um, limitations that we have when it comes to controlling children at recess. Uh, there are certain ages at which it won't be appropriate to keep the students completely separated. So what we have done is we have, uh, anticipating this challenge, we have put together a list of activities that our students can play, which is a little more organized than usual, where they can play um, as a team without having to come into contact with each other or another object. So uh, if it's, let's, for example, soccer, um, we can play a form of soccer where there's no, no touching of the ball um, So with your hands. So these are, these are types. We have a list of games that we have uh, generated for this purpose where our teachers are going to be more involved in what's being played and how we may ensure that the students are not sharing germs as they're playing at recess. So yeah. That was a kind of a long-winded answer to the question, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it's helpful. Okay. Uh, what, will the decision of which model be used be determined by family votes, or how is it decided? Great. And once the model is chosen, are we locked into that for the rest of the year? Uh, good question. So there's two questions to that. Um, one is, will the model be determined by vote? And once the model has been determined, will the family be locked into it for the entire year? So for the second question, will we be locked into that model for the entire year? The answer at the moment is we don't know. So um, I'm looking at and having conversations with my superintendent about this specifically. Uh, there have been some conversations about um, having some form of commitment from our families from, for either at home or on campus. Um, Given uh, last night's um, TA requirements, we might not be able to do that for an extended period of time. We might be able to do that just for a quarter or for a semester. So we're looking at that right now and determining what are we allowed to do and what are we not allowed to do uh, in order to serve our families better. Uh, now regarding the first question, remind me of oh, uh, how are we going to select it? A large part of it, yes, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the survey. We do, we do want to be able to take, make a decision based on um, your feedback and what works best with our community. Not all communities are going to be the same. Some families would prefer one model over the other at other schools. Um, so what we need to know and what we need to gather right now in order to make an informed decision is going to be what do our families want the most. Using that, in addition, in addition to the most up-to-date scientific data, and this is important, the data is changing, and it's showing some positive, um, positive results for schools specifically. Um, then we're going to base our decisions on both those pieces of information. So uh, in this whole process, however, I will make sure to keep you in the loop so that we're continually talking about what's happening, what do we have to look forward to, um, and how we're going to make things as smooth as possible for you and our children so that they can have an excellent year uh, coming this fall. So yes. Okay, what I'm going to need a little bit of water here. <laughs> you were, I'll take some tea. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next question. Yes. Campus and other large group classes like that. Yes. They, uh, so the question is, will there be PE? Yes, there will be PE. Um, again, the regulations change depending on the location in which our students are in. Uh, depending on the size of the room, then we're going to determine the sizes of our PE classes, our art classes, and our music classes. Uh, as you've probably heard, our choir and singing has its own set of regulations that we need to follow. So uh, we, we have looked at all of that and planned exactly where our students are going to be and at what times to ensure that uh, we are able to do um, the, everything as much as possible as we do it on a regular or traditional setting uh, without infringing on our ability to teach um, and 
meet the level of rigor that we always have here on campus. So yes, PE is still on the schedule to continue. It will look a little bit different than it does. Our groups might not be as large as they usually are, and uh, there might be a lot of outside work and not inside work as well. So those are some of the few things that we've been looking at uh, regarding PE. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> this is a big one. Thank you. So for um, students under 10 years old, can they wear a mask if they want to? Great question. If my child is under 10 years of age, can they wear a mask? Yes. They're more than welcome to wear a mask um, if they want to. And um, there are also face shields that, um, from what I can tell at the moment, and this could change, um, ladies and gentlemen, face shields are also uh, okay if the students under 10 years of age would like to wear them. I just want to remind our families of children who are very young, uh, masks are very, uh, just <laughs> given the nature, and the, uh, given the amount of energy that our young children have and how often they lose things, um, our lost and found is, is very much uh, <laughs> always stocked. Um, it is very likely for our students to, sh to uh, lose those masks often. Uh, we will not be putting those in the lost and found. Those will be going straight into the trash. So uh, I do need our families to understand that if they will send their little ones with masks uh, to, to put a name on it, <clears throat> to make sure that uh, the child understands that we have certain uh, regulations that we need to meet regarding masks that are left on the floor or in the playground. Um, so yes, just, just a quick note there about that. Will uniforms be required for... Live learning and online learning? That is a great question. Uh, will uniforms be required? Um, that is at the moment being debated with the team. Um, as you know, at Founders, we really believe that uh, the uniform is more than just um, more than just a tool to control the students. It's never really been about that. It's been about showing pride in standing for something, something. It's an emblem of what we believe in, so that we believe that, if possible, our students should be wearing the uniform at all times. Uh, I would wear the uniform on the weekends. That's just how much I love the school and how much I believe in what I do. Uh, but again, not all of our families feel the same way, and I understand. So that is being uh, debated right now with the team, and we will be letting all of our families know whether the uniforms are required or not. During the last quarter of the school year, we did not make it a requirement because of the unusual situation we were in and because of the level of stress that our families were experiencing at the time. So we wanted to minimize that. But now that things are different and we have been given an opportunity to plan things out from the beginning, uh, we get to choose whether we want to be intentional about the uniform or not. So that is again a, um, a decision that will be coming and we'll make sure to let our parents know with ample time. So thank you for that. That's a great question. Ms. Hugo yeah. asks, will there be daily screening and temperature checks? Yes, according... Oh, um, let, me, let, me, let me say the question out loud so everyone can hear it. Uh, Ms., Ms. Hugo? Yes, Ms. Hugo's wondering, daily screenings and temperature checks? Um, yes, those will be happening every day. Uh, our staff also will be required to be checked. Their temperature is going to be checked to ensure that <clears throat> nobody has any symptoms um, that are similar to the COVID and to obviously make sure that we're taking care of our children and, and our staff and making sure that everyone is safe. So yes, please expect that to happen. Okay. okay? Um, several of the same type question is... If one model is chosen mm -hmm. that doesn't include online, mm -hmm. but we have a child who has um, compromi compromised immune system yeah. or extenuating cir circumstances, will that be considered? Yes, great question. So if we, uh, the question is, if I select the uh, return to campus model, uh, but I have a extenuating circumstance, circumstances, I believe the question is, am I able to go back to the online model? Is that right? Well, will online be offered no yes. matter what for these particular... Yes, people? great question. So the, the, it, it doesn't work two ways. So this is, this is a very good question. 
because once you choose to stay home, um, we would like our parents to commit to stay home for the full year, okay? But if you choose to return, you are able to travel back to the other models, if that makes sense. What makes it uh, difficult for our families to, who choose to first stay home and then want to come back is that there might not be any space available by the time they have chosen to stay home. Because by staying home, you are opening up a space for, our, for the children who do choose to be here to be able to be here. Um, I think I've, hopefully that, that makes sense. You are able to, to, in extenuating circumstances, however, if you choose to return and be on campus, to go, out, to go online for a period of time and then come back. So that is, that is a possibility, yes. Will there be Lyceum? Lyceum. Uh, so uh, will there be an after-school care? At the moment, ladies and gentlemen, we are uncertain about there being a Lyceum. And that is only because we have not received all of the details of what that's going to look like for an after-school care program. Um, and at the moment, I wouldn't be able to, uh, I wouldn't want to give you any hope about that. We are looking at that right now, and we should be getting some more information for an after-school care program uh, anywhere between next week and the week after next. So uh, keep an eye out for some emails from us regarding the after-school care program. How are we doing on time? We're at 152. 152, okay. We got a few more. Let's do uh, three more. What will lunch time look like? Good. What will lunch time look like? So, um, due to social distancing restrictions, we are minimizing the number of students who are going to be in the gym at a given time. But not only are we doing that, we're also making sure that they're not sitting side by side, but they're staggered and spread out. So we will be utilizing the gym more than we've ever had in order to make that happen. In addition to that, we're also going to be implementing some more cleaning regulations for every one of our students um, prior to coming in, after leaving, um, and during while they're eating to make sure that we're keeping our eating spaces clean and safe. Um, for our children. So that's that's what our um, eating times will look like right now. So, yes. Will volunteers be limited on campus and screened daily? Yes, volunteers. Um, as you know, I am very big on volunteers and I love our families to be here on campus. Uh, given the restrictions, we might have to limit a little bit of that. Uh, not too much, at least not now. We do want our families to continue being here. If our families are okay with subjecting themselves to masks and screenings, then by all means, please continue volunteering. We need you. We love you uh, here on campus. And um, we can always use some extra support uh, on our, on our daily day-to-day -day things that we have to do. So, yes. Last one? Uh, okay. These are all very good questions, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait for my part to uh, teach the rhetoric class. I've been lesson planning uh, all summer, working hard on reading my Aristotle's rhetoric um, just to be ready to teach the 11th graders how to write speeches and how to give great speeches in, in front of an audience. So I'm really, really excited about that. Do we have one last question that we can address? Um, the only one I see that might reply to everyone would be um, any change in drop-off and pick-up? Are there any regulations in how to drop-off and pick-up your child if they're on campus? Uh, drop-off and pick-up at the moment, no changes right now for those. Um, that will depend on the model that we select. As soon as we know which model we're going for, that's going to affect how we do our drop-off, but especially our pickup, since we do um, put our students in the gym in order for pickup. So we will know um, what that change looks like as soon as we have a model selected uh, for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it was a real pleasure um, answering your questions, spending a little time with you. Uh, I hope that some of the answers um, have quelled some of your fears, giving you a little more confidence um, about this coming year. I believe and I know that we're going to prevail together. Uh, we are that kind of community. 
It's in our school motto. We rejoice in the challenge. So with that, I say goodbye. Virtus tentamine gaudet. Thank you.